So let's revisit this empirical rule. Again, it turns out this empirical rule actually follows from probabilities under a normal curve. That's where the rule comes from. That's where the rule comes from. To see this, let's check this out. We'll, we'll actually compute these using a normal distribution. So this first one here, the way you read that is the probability, the probability that the distance between the random variable x and the mean Right? That's what the absolute value bars get, is that the, the absolute distance between those two things inside there measures the absolute difference between them, right? Minus for difference. So the absolute difference between those things, chance that absolute difference is less than or equal to one standard deviation, right? Is about 68.27%. Let's pull out our calculator and check that out. Now, I can choose any normal distribution. I don't care what the mean is and what the standard deviation is. See? Let me show you. Do normal CDF, and let's say, oh, to make it easy, let's go from like, you know, let, let's say this thing has a, a mean of zero and a standard deviation one, okay? Then our upper and lower, you know, what, what I'll do is I'll just go, uh, you know, from negative one to one, right? Because negative one is one standard deviation below zero, and one is one standard deviation above zero. So what is that probability? 68.2789%. Okay, compare that. Yep, 68.27%. Again, it doesn't matter what the mean and standard deviation are. You get the same thing. Let's do it again, but this time, let's use, say, a normal distribution where the mean is, say, I don't know, what do you like? Say, uh, 100? Okay, very good. Where the average is 100? Let's say the standard deviation is 5. Okay, then one standard deviation below the mean, in this case, is going to be what? What is it? Good, 95. What's one standard deviation above the mean? Very good, 105. Just making sure you're paying attention. Okay, so now we paste that, and guess what? We're going to get exactly the same thing. You see? Same thing. You see? It really doesn't matter where on the number line that normal curve is. Here's the mean, call it mu, and here's one standard deviation up, and here's one standard deviation down. Then from there to there, you know, the area between those two marks under the curve is always going to be about 68.27%. In fact, it's going to be exactly this number right here, 68.26894809%. And it keeps going on and on and on, okay? It's, it's rounded out here at, like, what is that, a tenth decimal place or something. What about the next one? Well, the way you can read this is it's, it says, uh, okay, the probability of, or the probability that, this normal random variable, x, is less than two standard deviations away from average is about 95.45%. Okay, yep, it's always going to be. Let's check it out with our calculator. Again, you can use any mean, any standard deviation. What if I use a mean of like uh, 52 and a standard deviation of 2? So 48 up to 56, right? The mean of 52 and a standard deviation of 2. Okay, see that? Two standard deviations above 52 in this case is going to be, let's see, 1 is 54, and then 56, okay? 56 is two standard deviations up from 52, right? There are two twos between 56 and 52. 48 is two twos below 52. 48 is two standard deviations below 52. Standard deviation is two, right? Okay, so if I do this, guess what? I'm going to get 95.45% approximately. Do it again, but this time, let's use, say, a mean of negative 10. Yeah, you can have a negative mean and a standard deviation of 3. What's two standard deviations down from negative 10? By down, I mean to the left. Very good. I'm be down at negative 16, okay? And then if I go two standard deviations up from negative 10, I'll be at negative 4, right? Start at negative 10, go up 3, and then go up 3 more. I'm at negative 4. Okay, so guess what? I press enter there and I get exactly the same thing. Okay, 95.45%. And finally, what about three standard deviations up or down from the mean? I'll stay with negative 10 and 3. Okay, because we're already there. Well, three threes is 9. So 9 down from negative 10 is negative 19, right? And then if I go 9 up from negative 10, I'll be at negative 1, right? See, if you need a picture here, we're talking about three standard deviations up, three standard deviations down, right? So if the mean here is negative 10, if I go up 3 from negative 10, I'm at negative 7. I go up 3 more from there, I'll be at negative 4. Up 3 more, I'm at negative 1, right? If I go down or to the left, 3 from negative 10, you know, down, down this way, I'll be at negative 13. And then this mark will be negative 16, negative 
19, right? So I'm really asking for, you know, what's the chance that this random variable falls within three standard deviations either side of the mean, okay? It's the chance that it falls between negative 19 and negative 1, right? Which is exactly what we put in our calculator there. Again, you always do the left endpoint, and then the right endpoint, mean, and then standard deviation has to always be in that order. So what I'm really asking the calculator for is the total area in red here, okay? It's going to be about 99.73%. I press enter. There we go. Yep, 99.73%. Again, it doesn't matter what the mean and what the standard deviation is. If you've got a normal distribution, then about 68.27% of the observations are within one standard deviation. You go out two standard deviations out of the side of the mean, you're going to collect about 95.45%. You go about three standard deviations out either side, and you're going to get almost all of it. Okay, so this, this can tell you something about whether or not a data value might consider it extreme or not. Okay, another way to look at outliers, right? If something is say two and a half or three or more standard deviations out then you might consider it to be an outlier. Uh, again let's revisit this uh, student data set and look at the heights of students. So I've already thrown out the the real extreme values. Remember we had some students uh, who, whose heights have been recorded as like 5.5 inches or something crazy like that and we also had a couple of really really extremely large values and I toss those out. So over here on the left I've got the women. Over here on the right I've got the men. These are more or less on the same scale at least in the horizontal direction but vertically uh, note that you know that you know this this one goes from 0 up to 35 this one goes from 0 up to 50. Okay so really you know we, we might do well to sort of bring it up like that um, you know try to get them sort of on the same scale but you know the problem with that is <laughs> uh, when I do that now the the, the horizontal scale gets uh, it changes too so I'm just gonna leave it like that and remember let's just remember that there are about twice as many women here as guys total okay but I want to put them here side by side so that we can we can look at them individually and at the same time notice that the shapes are roughly mound shaped aren't they roughly there's a little skewness there I would say I, I would say that in each case we almost have maybe a semi bimodal situation semi bimodal you know sort of like that or you might just say it's sort of you know unimodal and kind of kind of left skewed right they sort of as you go from right to left they go up real quick and then they sort of decay off to the left um, a little bit so they're they're a little left skewed sort of like that but they're roughly roughly mound shaped I think if you let your eyes go out of focus a little bit you could sort of believe that and up here in the top I've, I've got their means for each uh, group the the mean for the women there 62.279 inches and the mean for the men is 69.127 inches. Standard deviation for the women, that's the sample standard deviation, is 4.589 inches and the sample standard deviation for the guys there is 5.565 inches. So if I pull out my calculator and let's let's look at the women, okay? So so if I take 62.279, that's the mean for the women, 62.279 and subtract the standard deviation for the women, 4.589, 4. 589 okay and then do the same thing but add a standard deviation enter okay the empirical rule then predicts that we should see about 68 percent 68.27 percent of our observations between these two marks between 57.69 and 66 and change does that look about right for the women 56.69 and 60 and about about you know we'd say about 58 to 67 58 to 67 58 is right here 67 is right here yeah that looks about right you know probably about 68 percent is gonna fall whoops right in you know right in there that looks to be about 68 percent and sure enough let's go over here to our data set and what I'll do is I'm gonna split this worksheet on the gender variable okay so now I have you know a worksheet that, that just has the the women in it and I've got another worksheet over here that now it's over here somewhere just has the men in it okay this one is my uh, worksheet for the women so what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna count all the women who responded to the who, you know for whom we have uh, height values for so the first one is here at row 37 that means I'll have to subtract off uh, 36 right the 36 the first 36 uh, was missing values for 236 minus 36 oh that's easy that's 200 so we got 200 height values for women 200 height values for women what I want to do now is uh, count up how many 
of these women had height between 57.69 and 66.87 or so. So 57.69. Uh, it's, it's right. That number is right in between these two. So this one, the 76th observation, the the one here in row uh, row number 76 is the first one in that group. You know, from set row 76 up to row 76 up to row 76 up to row 76 up to row 208. So that means I'm going to take row 208 and subtract 75 rows. Got 133. 133 divided by 200. Look at that. 0.665. The empirical rule predicted 68.27%. That's pretty darn close. Now if you remember before, or even if you don't remember, we did do this but for the men last time. Again, this empirical rule, it's a back of the envelope kind of estimation procedure. Sometimes it works better than others. Sometimes it works worse than others. Okay? But suffice to say, if your data are mound shaped, it tends to work okay. And the more normal they look, that is, the more they sort of adhere to this normal distribution like this, the better it's going to work out because the empirical rule actually comes from the normal distribution. Let's do one more. Let's look at, uh, you know, what if we looked at uh, three standard deviations out? Uh, so I'll go second entry and second entry, okay, for the women. I'm, again, I'm just going to be interested in the women this time because we've already talked about the guys, I think, in an earlier video here. So let's uh, subtract three standard deviations and then I'll do the same thing but add three standard deviations okay so the empirical rule predicts then that about 99.73 percent almost a hundred percent or about a hundred percent or so of the observations should fall between 48 and a half and uh, 76 inches or so I'll go back to my data set there remember we have 200 women so I just want to count how many observations I had between 48 and a half and 76 or so so in fact it's probably easier to, to count the ones that are not in that interval uh, you know our smallest height value is uh, 51 okay so in fact all of them all of the heights are above 48 and a half right what's our maximum height yeah let's see looks like uh, 70 74 all of our observations are actually between those two numbers so guess what a hundred percent then all 200 women had height values between these two marks the empirical rule says it it, you know, approximates it to, to be more like 99.73%. Hey, 99.73% is 100% approximately. So it works out pretty good.